adjusting with past preservation. Got another good one for you today. Last year when we were here working in uh, Jerome Township Cemetery, this uh, headstone was sticking out of this tree basically at a 45 degree angle like this here, exactly where it's at now. And uh, we started digging to see if we could pull the stone out, hopefully in one piece. And uh, it was had a hairline fracture across it, so it actually ended up coming out in uh, two large pieces and one small piece. Um, pressure of the tree just split it down below the uh, surface. But today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to prep this stone to be put back together. So what I'm going to do is the uh, bottom piece of this stone. I'm going to find a spot out here up close to where it should be um, and I'm going to dig a hole, set the bottom half of the stone into the hole and uh, then I'm going to prep clean both pieces and this small little piece to be uh, epoxied back together and infilled sometime later this week. So uh, without further ado, let's get started. So one of the big problems with uh, putting this thing back close to where it belongs is uh, you've got buttress roots on this pine tree going. Basically if you could imagine corners on a tree, I know that sounds weird, but um, so we need to put it somewhere where we're going to miss a buttress root and far enough away from the tree that the tree is not going to grow into the stone again which uh, this pine tree is probably right around 100 years old, maybe maybe 110. White pine, great big white pine. Um, I imagine it's probably not going to live much longer. It's not going to live long enough to continue to grow back into this stone if we were to put it in here somewhere. The idea is that we want to keep it in line with where the grave actually is. The stone was sitting where it's at, facing that direction. So about 90 degrees of what it's facing now. Um, so we're gonna, I'm gonna try to dig out a spot right here so we can um, put this stone at least in line with where the grave is at. If we get down here and we hit a root, then we'll have to try to move it again, find a different spot. bottom piece and stick it in there and see if it's gonna work out for us. I might have gone a little too deep but uh, can always add back in. Okay I got the piece pulled out and uh, got all the earwigs and gypsy moth caterpillars off of it. It goes in just like this. Yeah. Okay. That doesn't look too bad, I don't think. The idea is uh, to be able to. Uh, Yeah, put that piece back on there. And then the uh, top piece. Let's see if we can get it over there. Clean all the bugs and stuff off of it. Jeez. Oh. 
this top piece will sit right on there like that. And then we'll do some infill. We'll pox it back together and we'll do some infill and be uh, looking good. So yeah, I think that's gonna be perfect actually. The uh, ideal thing to would be to put it back together and then plant it and uh, bury it a little bit deeper so that that crack's not visible. But this is about the height that I want it to stick out of the ground. Um, it's that's probably about 24, maybe 26 inches or so. So that's about where we want it to be. Okay, good deal. Lean that back up there. We don't want to lose our little piece. We'll just uh, kind of make sure we're... There's actually a... Uh, a root right here on this corner so uh, it actually might kind of help uh, anchor it in place we'll just put some dirt back around it Okay, now we uh, just got to clean it. Okay, so I uh, arranged, or I moved this uh, other piece over and I got it propped up on my shovel. And uh, I treated them with D2, uh, let it sit for about 20 minutes. And uh, I was going to use the Orvis paste, soap, soap paste, whatever you want to call it. but. Uh, Decided just to use a little bit of D2 on this. It's going to kill the bi biological growth if there is any on there. And then uh, we want to remove as much of this dirt as we can with uh, this brush and some water right now. And the idea is if we're going to join these two pieces together, we need to have them be as clean as possible to uh, facilitate a proper joining. So we'll uh, get these two pieces cleaned up. Then a uh, couple of days, once they're good and dry, as long as it's not gonna rain and stuff, I'll come over and uh, we'll do the epoxy work on these. that small piece oh I got it sitting right here <laughs> I clean that by hand in this bucket so uh, that should be good to go now we'll just rinse both these pieces off with some clean water water around this will help to settle that sand around that piece.
There. Now, we'll uh, lightly coat that with some V2. And as long as everything looks good, uh, well, today is Monday. So as long as everything looks good on uh, Thursday, we'll uh, put these together, make them one piece again. Then uh, probably, well, it'll be Wednesday actually, we'll put them together. And uh, then the following Monday, I'll do the infill on it. I'm going to take this piece, put it up there, and I'm going to lean this up against this tree for now. Because uh, stone doesn't look very heavy, but let me tell you, that piece I just moved, probably close to 100 pounds. So, they're not light. Sure, we keep this piece with that. Got everything together so we don't lose anything. As long as the uh, cemetery personnel don't mess anything up, we'll be good, good to go here in a couple days. Alrighty, that's it for now. See you a couple days. Hey guys, it's been a couple of days since we cleaned this stone and, and set this bottom half back into the ground. Um, I've come today, I'm going to brush this off, make sure that there's uh, not a whole lot of loose stuff or dirt or anything, no loose pieces in this area of, of both sides of the stone, the uh, mating surfaces. And uh, by doing that, we're going to make sure that... Uh, we get the best possible bond with our epoxy that we can. Um, a lot of people like to use a uh, wire brush for this. Um, it's about the only time that you could really get away with using a wire, or the only time you should use a wire brush on a headstone. Um, this headstone is uh, doesn't have a whole lot of loose stuff on it. Um, in this broken area. Just gonna brush it with a stiff brush and uh, I already did that side. We're gonna get ready to epoxy this back together. So today I brought with me some uh, pieces of lumber, some short pieces. I've got some uh, 300 pound bar clamps there and I've got my Acapox 5010 uh, epoxy over there. And uh, that's what we're going to need to put these two pieces back together. So let's get started on that and uh, I'll walk you through step by step. Okay, so the stuff we're using today is called Acapox 5010. There's uh, quite a few different um, varieties of, of this stuff. Uh, this is an A and B component epoxy you can see this one says component a this one says component b and you can see that one tube is much larger than the other uh, this is 150 grams this is 300 grams because it's a two part to one part ratio so you can want to have as you want to have twice as much of this as this right so what i've got here is i've got on a piece of cardboard. I've got component A, component B, and there's about twice as much of component A as there is B. You don't have to be super precise. Um, they say be as close as possible. But uh, then uh, you just take that, and I just use a stick, and you start mixing it. And you wanna make sure that you get really good mixing. Make sure you combine it really well. And I think 
depending on temperature and and uh, humidity and stuff, you have about 45 minute play time with this stuff. So you uh, want to get it mixed up pretty good as quickly as possible. You want to make sure you have enough, and uh, that way you don't find out that you don't have enough and and have to add more. <laughs> so then, once it's mixed well, we uh, just gonna take it. And this is a four inch wide stone. So we're just gonna take it and uh, make a line right down the middle. And uh, you don't wanna put so much epoxy on um, that it's gonna gush out the sides. Uh, if you do, you're gonna find out the hard way that uh, it's really hard to clean up. If you do happen to add too much and it does gush out the sides, it's not the end of the world, but the most important thing is to uh, not panic and don't try to wipe it right away. Um, if you try to wipe it, it's going to smear and it's going to be darn near impossible to get off. If you, uh, if you end up with too much, the best thing to do if it gushes out the sides is to let it dry, let it harden, and then uh, you can break it off or you can uh, chisel it off. It comes off super easy and clean. So now, that I've got that spread. Try to uh, do this the best I can. Take those two pieces there. Well, this is where the uh, lumber comes in handy. Now we're ready to set this top piece onto the bottom piece. And uh, keep in mind that we cleaned this joint so we don't want it to get dirty. So you don't want to stand this thing up in the dirt or on the ground or get a piece of grass in it or anything. So it's best if you have someone here to help you because these things can be quite heavy. Okay, so we got it set. You want to make sure that you're lined up on your sides as best you can. Front and back, not real crucial right now, and I'll show you why. You're going to take this piece of wood, you're going to put it on here like this. You're going to put one on the front like this. Then we're going to take those clamps I got. And uh, I learned this at that class in Union City. You want to clamp it right at the joint. <laughs> this is where a second pair of hands comes in handy, but the good Lord only gave me one set, so. Okay, so I got a little bit of tension on that. I just want to make sure that I'm lined up here on the side because I don't want that to cure and be off set. And then we're gonna put a little more tension on that. And that'll hold it in place. We're gonna do the same thing over here on this side. And then in a couple of days, we'll do some infill and should be good to go but uh, that right there is how you reset or epoxy um, a broken stone I'm actually gonna move this one up a little bit there 
wonderful. A couple of days, she'll be ready to rot. All right, well, it's been about four days since we put this stone back together. Uh, I had to work a couple of days, so it's time to uh, see how we did. I was able to come up with this idea to <clears throat> fit that other piece in and uh, epoxy that back in. I put the stick in here to push on that to keep it in place. So we'll pop the clamps off and we'll see how we did. That seems good and solid. say we uh, it's good and solid not moving at all <clears throat> so now that we've uh, got this epoxy back together we're gonna do some infill all the way around make it look nice and uh, then it'll be done 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 restored back to the way it's supposed to be I'll go get my stuff brushes and whatnot and uh, we'll work on making sure this is all clean. I don't know if I'm going to be able to stick this piece back in here or not. Nope, the gap is just a little bit too tight now. So we'll just leave that piece out and we'll do some infill back there in that back corner. All right, I'll go get my stuff, we'll get started. Okay, well, at first glance, I didn't see any epoxy sticking out, but you can see right there, there's just a little bit that pushed out, and uh, what I've got here is a wood chisel, and uh, I find this works really nice because it's got such a fine point. We're just gonna get right on that, and Chip it off and then we can take the corner of it here we're just gonna kind of take a little bit of it out of there so we've got something for our infill material to stick to Otherwise, that's going to be a really thin layer of infill, and it won't hold very well. So, just open that up a little bit. ever so slightly okay I think that's good I think that'll work just fine I'm gonna mix up a little infill material and uh, well, that was out of focus wasn't it <laughs> and we'll uh, work on filling this in Okay, well, <clears throat> this is a relatively difficult angle to achieve <laughs> with my camera. Uh, <clears throat> I actually had to take it off the tripod and set it on the ground, but we uh, got some areas here along the side and the back. I actually already did some infill on the back um, that were pretty large gaps. Um, and I've got my infill material mixed up here it's uh, I actually used a just the regular light marble on this 
this stone is going to be a, a purer or a cleaner white than uh, Eliza Sanford's stone that I did a couple weeks ago. And uh, I actually think I mixed this stuff up a little too thin again. So I'm going to apply this first coat in some of these areas that are a little bit thicker. And uh, then I'm going to let it dry some and uh, go in and do a second coat. dry up a little bit set up and uh, we'll work on it a little more okay I actually uh, cleaned up that first layer and um, added a second layer I've let it set for a little while now and uh, I'm gonna clean it up and this one will be done I may come back at a later date uh, if this shrinks up a little bit. Um, this mortar has a tendency to shrink a little when it dries. I may come back at a later date and uh, add a little skim coat to it. But we'll see. We'll see if it needs it or not. Now, this stuff will dry. Like I said uh, in the other video, this stuff will dry a little bit lighter than what it looks now and then uh, when this stone is clean they should match pretty darn close so. I'm hoping that uh, they do anyways won't be the end of the world if they are a little off but it's always nice to have them match up the best you can. I think it looks pretty darn good. If you ask me. So, here I'll show you the other sides. This side is the one that we put that piece back in. And that'll dry a little bit lighter and once the stone's clean it should uh, match a little better. There's the back side. There's the other side. Awesome. I think uh, once that shrinks, dries, it'll shrink some. And uh, it's probably going to need a little skin coat, but looks pretty darn good to me. And if you come back out here, right where those 2x4s are up against that tree is where it was originally. So I just moved it back a little bit away from the tree. And uh, now all we got to do is set the uh, flag and the medallion next to it and it's good to go. There it is. That's the uh, headstone of Richard Rees. Put back together, infilled. It's got a little bit of work that needs to be done to it still as far as cleaning. But uh, that's the whole process. We can uh, say that we restored some honor to this man by uh, restoring his headstone. Hopefully now that we've saved it from this tree, it uh, will go on to be in this cemetery for another 100 plus years. And his descendants can come and visit, him, visit his grave. All right. 
Well, I'd like to thank everybody for coming along. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope that you learned something new today. Maybe uh, gave yourself a little more confidence to go out in your local cemeteries and do this same thing. If you guys haven't already, give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already, so you don't miss any more stuff just like this.